I'm glad you could join us. Go ahead and stab the like button and stick around for the next untold story. When I was around 14 years old, it was summer break, so as any other teen would do, I stayed in bed and slept throughout most of the day. I had woken up, but wanted to sleep longer, so I fell asleep. Then I began dreaming. In this dream, I had woken up to my mom yelling my name. I lived in a Mexican household, so when my mom was screaming my name, she was pissed. So I tried getting up, but it felt like my shirt was caught onto something till I felt something sharp stab into my shoulder, felt almost like a pencil. I was able to get up then before I could get to my door. It felt like as if my head was 30 pounds heavier, as if something had grabbed my head and was dragging me down. I soon fell to the floor and tried to get up, but it felt like I was strapped to the floor and my limbs were extremely weak. I was stuck on the floor while my mom screamed my name. Now, I think it was a lucid dream since I was able to walk around myself. Daddy taught me the cheapest entertainment of all is building things. You can go to amusement parks, but that is throwing money away. Daddy taught me that you can take pallets from behind the store and build things with them. One of my favorite things Daddy and I built was a giant outdoor hamster cage. It took a lot of weeks to get that many free pallets, but we finally did. We added a couple bales of hay and grew flowers in there that they like. We even built them a hamster food garden. Mama made little gnomes out of polymer clay with hamster faces. We built tunnels out of duct tape together shampoo bottles. We picked the glitter red duct tape. By the next year, it was ready for us to add the hamster. We got teddy bear ones. They were the hardiest ones the pet store had. And then Daddy said you don't need too many hamsters because the one thing hamsters are good at is pumping out babies. Pretty soon we had about 50 of them. We named them Scooby, Beavis, Ed, Sponges, Patrick, Buttercup, Morty, Rick, and other cartoon names. Mother and I picked them up every hamster toy we could find at yard sales within a 100 mile radius. The problem was, the snakes came. They slithered under the tall pallet walls. I took a shovel and chopped the heads of the snakes off, except I felt terrible killing snakes. It gave me nightmares. But slowly, the snakes ate every last cartoon in the hamster garden. I tried to think of ways to protect them, such as I brought out my shoes for them to curl up in to hide. But three days later, I found a snake all curled up in the sun in my shoe as it digested the big lump in its belly. Next, I set up milk jugs and put little handkerchiefs in there for the hamsters to help them hide from the snakes. But by the next morning, each gallon jug was full of snakes too engorged in to exit the narrow opening of the jugs. Once they left, there was nothing but red handkerchief left in each jug. And once there were no more hamsters, I realized I let the snake kill my precious little balls of fur. Me. I'd killed my own happiness by letting the snakes stand by, slithering in to kill them. I don't know what came of me, but I think it was rage from letting the snakes kill my hope, but I snapped. I took my shovel and dashed up the ground, dashed every corner of my extra-large outdoor hamster cage and cried that I didn't protect my precious little fur balls. I hate looking into mirrors. I'm afraid if I look away, I could see someone staring back. When I moved into my house, I saw a mirror facing my bed. I broke all the mirrors in my house and left only one mirror in the bathroom. You may call this insanity, but after this childhood experience, you may not or still call this insanity. I had to stay at my grandparents' house over winter break. It was my parents' 20th anniversary of marriage. My grandparents' house was old and dusty, but they had a chill kitty named Sketch. So I was somewhat happy when I heard the news. <laughs> the only thing that bummed me was sleeping in the guest room for two whole weeks. It was filled with old paintings. It smelled of paint, and there was a shelf of antique dolls. I get there and instantly go for the kitty, but he runs away around a chair and meows at me. I had major cuteness aggression around Sketch somehow. Not once did he scratch me. I go to unpack in the guest room and get welcomed by the smell of paint. <laughs> I lay in the bed for a few minutes before I hear come down for lunch. I go down past the hall to the kitchen and eat lunch and catch up with grandparents. We finish, and I go to sit in the TV room with the kitty. They had this antique mirror in there. I always got a weird feeling about it. It was dusty and cracked on the top left corner. I watch some TV and watch the snow fall. Sketch is curled up in a ball as I pet him with my finger. He was the size of my palm. After 30 minutes of chilling and watching TV, my grandparents feed Sketch, so he leaves. A few minutes later, he comes back. He then loafs on the rug, facing the mirror. He then quickly perks up and squeaks slightly. 
He walks to the mirror and paws it. He then squeaks again. I honestly felt a little uneasy by this, because why did he just suddenly go to the mirror? He then tries climbing up, while meowing. <laughs> it's like he does with Grandma when he wants attention. Sketch, come here, I call out. He ignores me, and then keeps doing this for 15 minutes before climbing down. A few hours later, I go to bed. All I hear was sad meowing. He sounded abandoned. I go down the hall to see him in the TV room meowing at the mirror. As I walk towards him, I see a shadow looming over him. I quickly grab him, and he starts to kiss at me before chomping me. I drew a slight amount of blood. I accidentally dropped him. He meowed sadly at me. I look at the dusty broken mirror to see a man with his mouth hanging down to his stomach. Blood and saliva were oozing out of his mouth and eyes. I could see it so clearly despite the mirror's poor condition. I blink for a second and the man is banging on the mirror, it breaks, and he stands in the frame. He's wheezing. I quickly pick up Sketch and haul my ass to my room and lock the door. The rest of the night was banging on my door and Sketch meowing. The following morning, I leave the room and go to the mirror it wasn't broken. Sketch then runs out of my room and my grandpa says, what did I say about keeping Sketch in your room? And it I said sorry and stayed in my room the most of the winter break, even Christmas wasn't joyful. You can call me insane if you want. I am currently alone working a night shift at a hospital morgue. I work as a cleaner, which means I've seen, smelt, and heard horrific things. I started a year ago, but strange things have only started recently. I want to document what's happened tonight. Firstly, the porters brought a recently deceased man down to be processed into the freezers. I did the paperwork and put him into the freezer until examination tomorrow. The freezers are empty apart from this man, as the funeral home collected the rest earlier. This is important. I sat down in my office, which overlooks the freezer drawers and examination table. I started playing chess until I look up and see the door to the freezer open. I went in and shut the door, creeped out, but thinking maybe didn't shut it properly. I sat down again and continued my game of chess. I won the game around five minutes later, so I looked up and the freezer door was open again. I knew I locked the door, so at this point I was very creeped out. I looked around the empty hallway to check no one was there, and as I thought it was just me and a dead body, or so I thought. I locked the door again and went back to the office. I was so uncomfortable being near the room and felt like I was being stared at from the corners of the room. Suddenly, a door crashed into the wall behind me like a rhino had just barraged into it. I could barely breathe from fear and grabbed for the radio to call security. I turned back to the room overlooking the examination table, and there was a women's body on the table. I dropped the radio and screamed all the time, staring at a body that shouldn't have been there. Like I said earlier, there should be only one body here, the man's. After catching my breath, I radioed security and they thought I was joking. About five minutes later, one security guard shows up confused as he looks at this body. The toe tag says, died 1994 at Queen Royal Hospital. The year is 2016 in Dr. Wright Surgical Hospital. How is there a body from 22 years ago lying on the table? We called the police, but when we had our backs turned, the body disappeared from the table as quickly as it arrived. We both went into the room, but it was empty. I had this feeling of dread come over me as I checked the freezers. Bay 1, empty bay, 2, empty bay, 3, empty bay 4 had clothes in. The man's clothes, but he was gone. I went to tell the security guard, but he wasn't there. I looked everywhere until I tried to radio him. The radio never had any batteries in. Who was the man who showed up? Where did he go? How did he make a dead radio work? All these questions, but no answers, that will ever come. After tonight, I'm never coming back. But whatever happened, here tonight, it's attached, it's self to me. I feel more heavy like I'm carrying someone on my back, I'm having thoughts that aren't mine. I always had trouble waking up, not because I liked sleeping, but because my surroundings would change each time I woke up. At first, the changes were small, almost unnoticeable happening bit by bit. However, over time, they grew worse. My dreams consist of random moments in my life. Initially, it was just minor changes, like the placement of things or names. Then, items we never owned started appearing out of nowhere. It seemed random, at least as far as I could tell. Sometimes, it was an old kid's toy, the kind you'd see in history books or shoes. I don't know how it started. When I was younger, I didn't dream at all. Sleep was so much simpler. 
My eyes would close, and I'd welcome the darkness that enclosed around me, only to open my eyes to the sound of my alarm. Hours would have passed, and I'd wake up groggy and just as tired as before. I would get up, having to make my way through another day. I hated it back then. I remember the aching in my back, feeling dreadful, hoping that next time I'd never wake up again. God, what I would do to get that back. Just silence, no worries, being able to easily open my eyes. No worries that the world around me had changed when I woke up. No feeling of pressure growing each time my eyes began to shut. I try not to sleep. My record is 108 hours and 45 minutes. You can't stay awake forever, though. I've tried. Many, many times. In the end, the Sandman always wins. I still remember my life from before it began. My family. My mother and father worked respectable jobs back then. They were so kind and loving. Dad was a store manager, and Mom was a nurse. They were the ones I always turned to. They were the first ones I told about what was happening when the changes were small and insignificant. I don't know what they are now, or which of them even exists, if either one does. The changes in my dreams happened again. I don't know what new world I just woke up to. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video. 